Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's uh, time for our devotion again. And uh, I told you yesterday that we are looking at uh, Holy Week and we're talking about the path that Jesus took uh, to on his way to uh, the cross, the grave, and then, then re resurrection. And so we're, we're, uh, we're looking at, at those uh, steps that he took throughout Holy Week. Um, before I begin this morning, I wanted to talk a little bit about Easter Sunday. Uh, we are going to have um, a celebration in the parking lot of the church. Um, the, uh, several members of the band will be performing uh, from a, a visible point. Uh, I, I, I promise you, you will be able to see us. Um, so there will be visibility. Um, I'll be preaching in a very visible place. Also, um, the parking lots uh, that we'll be using, we're going to make sure that there are ushers there to make sure everybody gets parked in a, and situated in a, in a good spot. Um, we're going to have people meeting people, uh, meeting uh, people who come to church. We'll have people posted in the parking lots um, at the entrances to the parking lot and then also further in the parking lot so that people who come in, they'll have a sign that basically says, please keep your uh, window rolled up and that'll be very significant to, significant to us. We hope that as we have this worship service, everybody will comply with that and, and just wave nicely to each other and uh, let's not roll down our windows and talk. We just uh, wanna, wanna comply with the safety uh, issues of, of the day. So uh, they'll say, have a sign that says, please uh, keep your window uh, rolled up and, um, and and tune into this channel and then have the channel on the sign. Um, we will have an FM transmitter and so you'll be able to come into the church, park in, the, in a parking spot of visibility and you can turn, turn into your radio channel, uh, some channel that we're going to have, we're going to tell you what that is, I don't know what it is yet, but an F, F, FM channel and so you'll be able to listen here too, you'll be able to watch uh, and listen and uh, if, if you have something uh, further need there there's going to be uh, stuff on Facebook and, and we're going to be streaming it so there's some explanations of this on the website if you go there uh, but I guess I want to assure you that it'll be a very safe uh, worship service but also it, it'll be really a very historic worship service for the church I think um, I don't think this will ever happen again um, and, and uh, it'll just be one of those remembrances of the church where that that's the, that's the week that we came together in the midst of all this turmoil that the world was going through and we um, shared our love with each other during this time. And so um, there will be parking, there will be visibility, there will be sound. Um, trying to think of some of the other issues that might uh, you might be concerned about. Um, we're, I, I don't know what other issues I might be. I'm, I think I'm gonna put an explanation on or post it on the website or just a written web explanation of, of how it's gonna look. We're gonna use, uh, we're actually going to use Ben Gate parking lot as well. So if there's an overflow of parking needed, um, there's going to be plenty of space over there. So so please come and, and um, just uh, be a part of this extraordinary worship service. I know one of the things we're going to do is we're going to have a, 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 a Brandon Baird is going to have his, uh, what do they call those, uh, flying picture taking things. I can't even come up with it. And, and uh, he's going to take a picture, an aerial picture of, of, of the church during this time. And so it's just going to be exciting to, to be together. And um, we just want to do it, everything we can to make sure it's safe. We're going to get a police escort uh, to make sure that uh, we have a safe entry uh, or exits in, into the highway and, and those kind of things. So we'll do everything we can to make this a pleasant experience as we share uh, Easter together this, uh, this Sunday morning. Um, so I wanted to, to go into the another a aspect of uh, of the uh, Holy Week, and this is I'm going to be reading from Luke uh, chapter 23, and um, so this is we're going to be talking about the, the trial of Jesus, and um, <clears throat> before we do that, let's let's have, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus for your grace as we once again come to your Word and to together share. Uh, our hearts and our thoughts uh, before your Holy Spirit. We do pray for those around us. Uh, we're hearing uh, more and more reports of people um, with the virus. We ask your healing touch to be upon them, Lord God. And once again, we ask your protection uh, around this city, this county, around those that we love. Protect us from this virus and keep us safe. And uh, we just pray for our community and for our church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, so uh, we go to Luke chapter 12, and we see, uh, we start to read about the trial of, of Jesus. Now, 
Uh, most people think of the trial of Jesus um, as, as one trial, but the reality of the, of the situation was it was not just one trial, it was actually six trials. And I wrote this down. First he was tried by Annas, then he was tried by Caiaphas, then he was tried by the Jewish Sanhedrin, then he was tried by Pontius Pilate, then he was tried by Herod, King Herod, then he was tried by Pontius Pilate a second time. And um, he, so he had six, six trials, and you find those throughout the Gospels. They're, they're named at separate, uh, several different places. And in his six trials, um, he faced a lot of different char charges. Um, once he faced uh, one count of misleading the, the nation, one count of tax evasion, one count of impersonating, impersonating a king, one count of inciting, inciting people to rebellion, uh, one count of blasphemy, and so he had all these these uh, these accusations. Um, but the Bible says that all of these accusations were false. They were they were all just lies, and so that there was no accurate uh, there was no nothing accurate about them. And so he was declared in these trials. He was declared several times. Uh, he was declared innocent. And and you look look at Luke chapter uh, twenty three, um, four times. In this trial of Pilate, this single trial of Pilate, four times he calls Jesus innocent. Okay, um, so in Luke chapter twenty-three, um, verse four, Pilate announced to the to the chief priests and to the crowd that I find no basis for a charge against this man. And then dry, dropping down uh, to verse uh, fourteen, uh, he says, "You brought this man to me as one who is inciting people to rebe to rebellion." I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Um, and then that dropping down to verse 15, as you can see, he has done nothing. He has done nothing to deserve death. And then dropping down to verse uh, 22, uh, for the third time he spoke to them, why, what crime has this man committed? I've found no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. So four times he was declared innocent by Pilate. One time he was declared innocent uh, by Pilate's wife. wife. Pilate was during this whole process. And, and one, uh, 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 Matthew's Gospel, um, Pilate's wife comes to him and says, have, you, you better have nothing to do. And she says, with this innocent man. So she declares him innocent because she had a dream about it. Um, one of the two thieves that were crucified with Jesus declared him innocent. He said, he leaned over to the, to the bad thief, the good thief said, we are punished justly, but this man has done nothing wrong. And so the thief even that was executed with Jesus said, he's, he's innocent. And then it was all over, when it was all over, the Roman centurion who was in charge of the ex execution, uh, who had executed Jesus, he said, certainly this man was innocent. That was his declaration of, of innocent innocence for Jesus. So it, it's made incredibly clear during the trial of Jesus that this was a sham. Uh, Isaiah's, got, Isaiah's book of the Old Testament calls it a, a perversion of justice, this trial. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. So, so Jesus was absolutely innocent. And it reminds us of the phrase that John the Baptist uh, when, when John the Baptist was baptizing people in, in the Jordan, he looks up and he sees Jesus coming and he says, he looks at Jesus and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And that reference is so profound that he calls Jesus the Lamb of God because the Lamb of God is a reference to the Old Testament sacrificial systems where, where the, for the Jewish nation, if they wanted to, to uh, purge themselves from their sins, they would take a lamb and they would uh, sacrifice the lamb, and the lamb would die for the sins of the one who, uh, who brought the lamb in. He, he, the, the lamb would, would die uh, for the owner's sins. And um, this, this is so, it, it, there's so many nuances, so many aspects to this as you meditate on Jesus as the lamb of God, um, because he's God's lamb. He's God's perfect lamb. He's not a human lamb. He's not one of the lambs that we brought forth for ourselves. He's the lamb that God provided for us. And so he's a perfect and spotless lamb. And so as, as um, his trials went on, we were inspecting uh, Jesus to see how spotless he really was. Um, the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the, the priests um, who were sacrificing lambs, they, one of their jobs was to inspect uh, the lamb. They would give 
uh, you know, the, they would ins inspect the lamb and they would say what we needed is a spotless lamb, a, a lamb without spot. And if the spotted lamb, if there was a spotted lamb, well, we said we can't sacrifice this spotted lamb. We have to let the spotted lamb go free. Let's use the spotless lamb. And so when, you know, we're, we're, we're all God's lambs and we're all spotted, but Jesus is that one spotless lamb who the, who the, who the priest inspects and says, you were, he was innocent, 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 declared in these six trials, innocent. He's the one, he's the spotless lamb. And he was the one who died for the sins of, of, of the people. He took away the sins of, of the people. And, and, and um, the, the uh, there's just so much, it's so rich in, in um, what God is trying to say to us about the nature of forgiveness of, of sins. So that when, uh, the, the, the neat thing, when, a, when an Old Testament uh, a sinner brought a lamb to the priest, it's the fascinating thing about it is the priest would not inspect the sinner the priest would in, inspect the, the lamb. And, and so it's, it's not about how bad the sinner was. It was about how, how pure the, the lamb was. But the efficacy of, of the, forgiven, the forgiveness of sins was not based on how bad uh, the person who sinned was. It was on how pure, how clean, how innocent uh, the lamb, the sacrificial lamb was. And that's what Jesus' trial reminds us of. He was absolutely innocent. We are spotted. We are sinful. We do bad things. We do all bad things all the time. We think bad thoughts. We do bad things. And, and, and we have bad attitudes, etc. But we have a spotless lamb who the book of Hebrews says, once for all took away the sins of the world. And the encouragement that we have as we meditate on this, and I encourage you to go home and, or to, well, you are home. <laughs> To, but I encourage you to look at the Luke's, go, Luke's gospel, read chapter 23, and look at this trial and meditate on how perfect Jesus is as he lays down his life for our sins. Let's bow our heads together. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for the gospel record of this spotless lamb who was given for the sins of the world. And our confidence when we come before you is not in us and how good we are, and how we've maybe done more good than bad in our lives. And as we look back on our lives and we look at a shady past and we say, uh, you know, I just hope I did more good than bad. It's not about any of that stuff. It's about how pure this lamb of God is. It's how pure this inspected lamb was. Absolutely innocent. And what he gave to us was his innocence. And he took our guilt upon himself. And that is the essence of the gospel for which we give you praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Have a great day today.